What's up everyone, Tape Down here. Welcome back to another video. As I mentioned in the last career journey video, I did apply to corrections and I got an email saying that I was ready to take what is their selection process. So the first step was to take the Wonderlick test, which I recently did. And I just got an email a couple days ago stating that I passed and I was ready to move on to the next part for corrections. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the Wonderlick test to share my thoughts and to help you guys get ready for it, but also take a practice test so you guys know what to expect on the actual test. Let's get right into this. So for those that don't know what the Wonderlick test is, it is a 50 multiple choice question, 12 minute timed test. And a lot of people start to freak out whenever they hear that. However, they just want to see how many you can answer correctly in the 12 minutes. You don't have to answer all 50 questions. And for example, if you don't answer, let's say 20 questions, the last 20 questions, that does not affect your score whatsoever. They just want to see in the 12 minutes allowed, how many you can answer correctly out of the 50. Also the Wonderlick test, as I mentioned, I was taking it for corrections, but it's for multiple different careers, anything from nurses, engineers, NFL players, or even cashiers. It's for multiple jobs. So it's not just for corrections, which is why I took it. So now let's check out this free practice test and I'm gonna leave this one linked down below. Okay, so this is the free Wonderlick practice test. Like I said, I'm gonna leave it linked down below. And I'm basically just going to go through all of the questions and basically explain them a little bit more and go step by step and also talk about some other questions that might be on it that are not on this practice test. Now, I just want to state that the questions that are on this practice test are not the exact ones that are going to be on the real test because that would be cheating and I could get in a lot of trouble if I shared the actual questions. So I'm not gonna be doing that. This practice test is gonna be based on questions that are similar to the ones that you will expect to see on the actual exam. So the first question here, Emma and Anna went to the market to buy 25 fruits. Emma got a few apples that cost $2 each and Anna bought some oranges which cost $3 each. If their combined total was $60, how many oranges did Anna get? So this is a math word problem. So I don't know how the actual equation goes. I try to answer it as best as I could because it's a time test. So what I did was I took the $60 that they spent in total and I basically wanted to find out how many fruits that Anna bought and how many fruits that Emma bought. So I did go 60 divided by two, which gave me $30. So basically that's them dividing it in half evenly. And I took that $30 and for Anna, for the oranges, they cost $3 each. So I took 30 divided by three, which gave me an answer of 10. Now to check to see if this was right, I wanted to see the total amount of fruits to see if Emma is getting 15. So I took 60 divided by two, which was 30. And then I took 30 divided by two, which was how much the apples cost, which gave a total of 15. So if you add 15 and 10, that is 25. That is how many fruit they bought all together. So the answer to the first question is 10. The next question, over a four month period, two students borrowed the following number of books. Student one borrowed 20, 15, 17, and 18. Student two got 18, 20, 15, and 12. So it is gonna show you a charts here with no numbers or anything on it and you basically want to find given the data that they gave you which one is the correct chart right away i'm going to say that the right answer is chart a because it does match next question three is a 3d shape that is unfolded and you basically want to find out which of the numbered corners when it's folded back together is going to hit the x here touch that corner so if you were to fold this cube back up, it should be E that touches that corner and that's what I'm gonna choose. But it shouldn't just be on the actual test. It's not just gonna be a cube. It could be any 3D shape. And you're basically gonna to want to, it's gonna be all unfolded and you're gonna to want to basically think of how it's gonna be folded back together and which corner is touching where it wants you to get the right answer for. So a lot of people struggle with that, but that one's not too bad. 
The next question here is a pattern. So it could be anything from number patterns or for this one here is actual shapes. Um, so this one here, we're gonna do the black line first. So it is up, then it's to the left, then it's down. So this one here should be to the left, I'm assuming, which is E. Uh, I'm gonna check the gray line though. So gray line's here, then it's up, then it's there. So it should be to the right. So I'm gonna guess E is the right answer. Now some are gonna be a little bit trickier than this one here, but they're gonna be basically a pattern where you have to solve. The next question is another math problem. When I find the math word problems people struggle with the most. So this one here, question five, a total of $114,000 will be evenly spent to build 12 bungalows. If the first five bungalows have been completed and paid for, then blank is available for the remaining bungalows. So this one here, you're going to take the total amount that is used. So $114,000, you're going to divide that by 12 to find out how much each bungalow will cost to build. And that gives you a total of 9,500. Then you're going to take the 9,500 and times that by five because five are already built and you're gonna get an answer of 47,500. Then to find out what the remaining number is, you're gonna take 114,000 minus 47,500 and the answer is 66,500. So the answer to this one is 66,500. So there will be, and I can verify this because I took the test, there is gonna be questions like this on the actual test so you're basically just going to want to work through it like I just did. And some of them for these ones, even though it tells you not to use a calculator, I'm sure people do because some of the answers, the choices that it gives you are so close. You don't have much room for error. Question six is another word problem, but base, it's, a, it's kind of an easy one and a quick one. So within the first four months of the year, Vicky was able to serve the following number of burgers, 370, 330, 460, and 420. The average number of the burgers she served each month was blank. So basically you're just gonna to want to find out what the average is. So to do that, you're gonna add them all up, which is 1,580. You're gonna divide that by four, which is 395. So on the test, you might have four numbers that you have to find the average for, five numbers. So basically you're just gonna wanna add them all up, divide by four, and that's gonna give you your average. So this one here is 395, but like I just said for the last question, they don't give you much room for error. 390, 395, 385, 405, 410, all of them are really close. So without a calculator, I think a lot of people would honestly struggle with this one. The next question is another math question, so expect to see, in my opinion, a few tricky questions, ones that will make you stumble and think, and then a few quick ones like the puzzles I just went through near the beginning. So for this one here, so what you're going to do is you're going to take $1 million, divide it by four to find out how much each of them are going to make by dividing it equally, and that is $250,000. And then you're gonna add all of the invested money together. So 200,000, 500, 500, and 800, that gives you a total of $2 million that was invested. You're gonna take the $2 million and divide it by $200,000, which is what investor A invested, which gives you 10%. So he only invested 10%. So then you're gonna take the $1 million and you're gonna divide that by 10%, and that gives you $100,000. So, if investor, if all the investors decided to whatever out of the million that was earned, if they de decided to divide that million dollars based on the amounts that they invested, investor A would only receive a hundred thousand dollars profits. Whereas because they're dividing evenly, he is receiving two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So the answer to this one is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So there is word problems like that math problems and you just have to work through them as quickly as you can. Next is another pattern and this one I can verify that it is going to be on it. Very similar ones. 
basically it's going to give you a pattern right here and out of the choices you're going to want to choose three of them to make this pattern but two different colors cannot overlap so for example here with a the two gray ones they are correct and then the two blue ones they are correct so one of the answers is a then b blue is correct top blue is correct and then gray is correct it does overlap but it is the same color so b is another one um and that leaves us with this one here that we need so the only one that has this gray is e and blue overlaps but it's the same color so that's fine so the answers to this one is a b and e now there is going to be ones like this on it so just go as quickly as you can it doesn't really take that much time Number nine is a word problem. The words lenience and forbearing have a blank meaning. So you're basically going to want to just select the right one, which is similar for this instance. Now, it's going to have different word problems. For example, it could have something for green is to grass as blue is to blank. And one of the options might be the sky. So that would be what you would choose. So it's going to have word problems like that, word problems like this. There's also going to be ones where it gives you a, a definition to a word and it's going to give you multiple words with very close definitions and you have to select the right one. So there's going to be ones like that. And the last question for this free practice test is the office floor is 250 feet by 80 feet. The conference room is 50 feet by 20 feet, which covers blank of the office. So for this one here, it's pretty easy. You're going to take 250 times 80, which is 20,000. Then you're going to take for the conference room 50 times 20, which is 1,000. Then you're going to take the 20,000, divide it by 1,000, which gives you 20%. So the conference room covers 20% of the office. So not too hard, but again, if you had a calculator, it would be way easier. So this is the practice test. If you find that you're struggling with the practice test, then I recommend just going and trying to find a few more free practice tests, taking them, trying to get your timing down so you can answer them as fast as you can, but also so you know how to find the right answers. But this practice test will be left linked down below in the description. I recommend checking it out and just taking a bunch of practice tests to prepare you for the test. Of course, any big test that is going to affect your career, I recommend for sure preparing for it before just going and diving into it. The next thing that I have to do for corrections is a two hour, four part test, which is a few different things. It is basically common sense stuff to me. Um, there is writing reports, which I do at my current job anyways, and a few other aspects. So it's going to be interesting, but whenever I take that test and get the results, I'll share hopefully a practice test for that with you guys, but also I'll talk about the test itself like I did for the Wonder Lick test. So hope this hasn't helped you guys try to not stress out so much over the Wonderlick test because in my opinion, it's not too hard. It's just, it is a time test, so it does stress a lot of people out. I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please take care. Peace.